Hey guys, it's Daniel here again with some more tips and tricks on a 2022 Mini Cooper convertible this time. It has been refreshed on the front and rear bumper for the new 22 model year. So you've got a side curtain here for increased aerodynamics and body painted color front bumper as opposed to the old black. Here's a nice view of the updated rear bumper. This Mini is a metallic paint called British Racing Green. It also has silver mirror caps and silver bonnet stripes. The side scuttles have also been redesigned. So I'm gonna show you the turn signals there. And the fog lights are now integrated into the Mini's headlights, so you no longer see those in the bumper of the Mini Coopers like you did previously. The tail lights are now standard with the Union Jack design, so you'll see that across the board with every Mini. This Mini has the iconic trim package, which is loaded with almost every option. 17-inch silver tentacle spoke wheels, which are also available in black, and the Chesterfield leather and malt brown seats. Stick around to see those in detail. The fuel cap door is located on the passenger side. It's got a sticker inside to remind you to use mid-grade or premium gas and a designated area to hold your fuel cap. So be sure when you put that fuel cap back on to turn it to you here, click. To open the bonnet, pull the release handle two times to access the engine bay. There is no bonnet release located under the bonnet, so simply lift it up. You have three options when it comes to the engine in the Mini Cooper convertible. You can do the Cooper, the Cooper S, or the John Cooper Works, varying from horsepower at 134, 189, and 228. Here is a closer look at the high-end Chesterfield leather seats in malt brown with the diamond pattern stitching. The convertible is also the only Mini that has a lockable glove box. Remove the internal key from your Mini key fob to lock or unlock the glove box to protect your personal belongings. In case you want to leave the top down and just run inside a store real quick and come back out, that way you don't have to worry about what's in there. The telescopic steering wheel can easily be adjusted. You can maneuver it out, in, down, and up. This is also where you're going to find the button for the heated steering wheel, although I don't know how well that's going to work here in Florida. To adjust your seats, the larger handle moves the base of the seat up or down in height. The smaller one is going to adjust your backrest, and the metal bar underneath will move the entire seat forwards or backwards on the platform. You also have a nice extension on the front of the seat for your legs there as well. With the upgraded seats, you also have your lumbar support on the driver's side and passenger side. To access the back seat, use the handle on the back of the driver's seat or passenger seat and you can slide the entire seat forward. The convertible has a fully recessed active rollover protection system, which is two bars that extend if necessary, located just behind the back seat. This is the button that opens the boot of the Mini. Here you can access the handles to lower the back seats. Just pull the handles located on each side to lower them, which creates a nice little pass through there for you. And you should be able to fit your golf clubs in there now. To expand your storage, pull up on the two easy load handles in the boot. This can help you easily adjust the rear shelf on your own, or in my case, with just one hand while I'm recording. Then you can raise or lower the shelf to increase or decrease your cargo area. In the top position, you won't be able to lower the top, but you can still use sunroof mode. And make sure you push down slightly with the easy load handles to put them back in place when you're lowering it. That way you don't have any leaks and you create a nice tight seal like there was there before. Here are your power window controls. The larger one controls all the windows at the same time and you can still do them individually. This Mini is equipped with the auto dimming rear view mirror and garage door opener. If you have an alarm, this will flash red at night when you lock your Mini. These toggle switches operate your map light, dome light, convertible top, ambient lighting, which you get to select by pressing the toggle switch until you find your desired color 
and the passenger side map light as well. To raise or lower the convertible top, use the large center toggle switch that we just reviewed. Press and hold the direction you would like the top to go. And you also have the sunroof mode, which can open it midway if you don't want the top completely open. To turn on your automatic windshield wipers, press up on the side stock there till the green light comes on. You can adjust your speed. And then if you want to turn it off, just press back down to disengage. Here is the sensor to let you know when it's raining. To turn on your automatic headlights, make sure you have that switched over to the far left where the A is. Here's your fog light control, and to control how bright or dim your instrument clusters are, use this wheel. Your multi-function steering wheel controls can control the volume, scan stations up or down, use Siri, pick up or hang up phone calls, you've got your cruise control on the opposite side, and your horn right there in the center. Mini also has a new updated dynamic digital cluster here, so you see your RPMs on the left, fuel gauge on the right, and you'll have your speedometer right there in the center. To start your Mini, you need to first press in on the brake, and then press down on the start switch. After you've turned your Mini on, you're going to see all the systems start up here for you, including the head-up display, if your Mini is equipped with that. You get a nice Mini greeting, and then it's going to display your speed. If you have your navigation set, it will show you turn-by-turn -turn directions here as well. So as an example, here's some radio stations that you're scrolling through. The check mark shows when you have selected that particular station to listen to. And the white box on the far left will show you the speed limit sign for the road that you're traveling on. With the iconic trim, you also get a wireless charging tray in the center armrest. If you have a plus size phone, unfortunately, it won't fit. And here we have the control which can help assist you with selecting whatever you would like on the 8.8 inch display. If you don't like using that particular control, you can also use the touch screen that's built in with it. So you can select different things on the screen, whichever way you prefer. The touch screen here, you can just go to the home button and select music for your radio stations, AM, FM, satellite radio. You can adjust your vehicle settings, system settings and your openometer, which keeps track of how long you've actually had the top down for your Mini since you've been the owner. You've got your front collision warning, pedestrian warning, and lane departure warning that can be adjusted by pressing that button. You can change the warning signs from early to medium and also to late. What this is going to do is it will intervene if you're not paying attention and apply the full brake pressure for one full second. The lane departure warning will vibrate the steering wheel and let you know you're going out of a lane if you didn't intend to. And here's where the camera is located. The dual zone auto climate control allows you to change the temperature for the driver's side or passenger side. You can choose which air vents to have open or closed and increase or decrease the intensity of the fan speed. You've got your heated seats for the driver's side and for the passenger side. Just below there, a second set of toggle switches, which starts with your traction control. That's where you would turn that off and get notification right there on your screen to turn the mini on or off with the red switch and the auto on off for the engine. So if the light is on, then the engine will stay on. And you've got some extra charging ports here in case you have a plus size phone that won't fit in the center console. To unlock the Mini and shift it into gear, you need to press this button and press forwards or backwards to get in the desired gear. And to put it in park, just press the P button right there, and that's going to put you in park, and you've got your e-brake. The backup camera in the Mini Cooper convertible I think is one of the most important features because you can't see that much with the top up. So you can turn the rear view camera on or off, depending if you want to use just the park sensors, which I wouldn't really recommend in this car. And it's going to show you green, yellow, and red based on where you're at nearest to an object. You can change how bright or dim it is, adjust your contrast, and you can change the park distance control lines. So the green lines will show where you're currently going, 
And then the red lines will show you where you're going if you're turning the wheel completely. You'll see the orange and green right there just showing that there is an object nearby and wanting you to be careful. So if we are backing the car up, which I'll show you here in just a second, you'll notice behind the Mini, it's going to have green, yellow, and red to let you know as you're getting closer to an object. And it's going to start with a beep and steadily increase to where it's similar to a flat line. If you hear that steady beeping where it's like a flat line, you're either getting really close to hitting something or perhaps you already did. So just be careful while you're doing that. You'll also notice that the ambient lighting around the center instrument cluster changes color to let you know, red, you're in the danger zone. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.